Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this case. This is a uh, patient that's obviously missing a bunch of teeth. Um, it's going to be a distal extension guide, obviously, for placing implants. And so this video is going to be broken down into a couple of sections. One is going to be doing the wax up, and that's going to be the first video here that we're focused on. And then the second video will be making the guides because distal extension guides provide a, a unique set of problems. Um, so we'll go ahead and do the wax up first. So all I've done so far is I'm in Blue Sky Plan. Uh, I've just opened the case. Nothing else has happened to this point. And so uh, you could go in different orders. You know, I'm working in advanced mode here, as you can see. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just map the nerves. So if I go up here to add nerve, you've got the option to do it manually. You can detect individual nerves. With the new auto functions that Blue Sky has, the simplest way to do this is just to say auto detect nerves. All right, so you can see there very quickly, we've got a couple of nerves in the case. Now, with just like with stitching in Blue Sky Plan of your STLs, it all happens automatically now and it's extremely reliable, but always verify it. You know, it's one thing for it to do it, but you know, you don't want it to maybe have missed an area and you just automatically trust it and then you end up hitting a nerve because you never verified anything. And so one thing to, to point out, you know, when I do this uh, case in courses, inevitably, uh, you know, people will just start clicking and they're like, you know, what's what's going on here? Why is why is this not behaving and doing anything and before long you know i come over to help him and i look and they've got you know this ball of yarn looking thing over here it's because this tool is still active after you map the nerves notice that it's active here it's turned blue you got to turn that off before you start doing everything else so make sure you either use the back arrow or the control z i'm going to control z back to the point where this was where it was supposed to be and I'm just deactivating the tool. All right, now I can go through and verify my nerve. So I like to do that in the cross section. And I'm scrolling through, that looks like a really good nerve map. Just to point out if there's an area that it failed on, which will sometimes happen when you have like what I call hollow mandible syndrome, where it's like a dense cortex and then the inside just looks like nothing. You know, that there's no cortical boundaries on the nerve. Those are the ones where the AI function in Blue Sky might potentially miss it, and those are very difficult to map. But let's say if it was off, anywhere that I see one of these little white nodes, I can grab that node and move it around and reposition it to wherever it should be. But this looks actually really good. I'm going to go look at the other side as well. So right here is the mental. That looks great. And then scrolling on down, looks good. Now, the one other thing I often get questions about is the anterior loop. So I'm going to go down and just check for an anterior loop. So what I've done is gone to the axial slice. This is the top middle window, if you're in the view that I'm in. And I want to go to the level of the mental foramen right here. And as I zoom in and look here, that really looks like maybe just a one millimeter, if that loop, uh, over here, you know, just to make a good zone of safety, I'm going to pull that one up just a hair, but really this looks pretty good. Um, I'm not noticing any major loop. And as I go down, you know, you do see this coming off, but notice it never comes back. That's, that's a dead giveaway that that's the incisive branch of the canal. That's just continuing up, giving innervation and blood supply to the lower incisors doesn't really enter into the equation a whole lot for us on our implant placement. So once you like this, go ahead and lock your nerves. And now with those nerves locked, I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize that window. So the next thing I wanna do, you know, normally we would have STLs in here. I open this as a pre-existing Blue Sky plan to demo this case, so it hasn't already prompted me to bring in STLs like it normally would. Normally, as soon as you open the case, it prompts you bring in your STLs. Um, you know, here I haven't done that. So good thing to know how to just go ahead and bring those in manually. I'm going to go to File, Import STL. And we'll do this upper STL first. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the upper STL. 
Now, I want you to notice that here, here's the STL. It's way out of orientation because it's going to leave the interworld scanner or the desktop scanner in a different orientation. We're trying to now stitch that to our CT data. So all I have to do once this pops up, tell it that this is a maxilla, and then click OK. All right, and this is launching the automatic alignment process. You know, if you're getting into Blue Sky Plan at this point and you never had to do the manual stitching, I can't tell you how spoiled you are because, uh, you know, it's an awesome feature. I used to spend hours of a, of a basic course just teaching that, and now it just happens. So just like with the nerves, I trust it, but I always verify it. The only time I've noticed when this will uh, not give me a good alignment is generally when there's tons of scatter. And if there's tons of scatter, you know, you just can't get a good alignment. And even, it'll try, and it usually gets in the ballpark, but you just will look at it. And it's like, well, I don't know if it's just good or not. That didn't really happen here. She does have a couple PFs, PFMs and an implant crown, but uh, I do think this is a really good stitch. So, you know, I've got old videos on how to deal with heavy scatter cases. And uh, you can go and watch those if you need to know how to manually stitch in those cases. Or sometimes you just might need to do a scan appliance. This looks good. I always verify the stitch in this axial slice. And what I'm looking for is that really tight adaptation, just like you see here. That model outline, the green outline, disappears at the same rate as what the CT data disappears at. So that looks really good. And furthermore, this is an airspace. You know, her tongue is right here. And where it's not sitting against the roof of her mouth, you can actually easily distinguish the tissue boundary of uh, her palate. And that model alignment should you know, track right along that as well. So this looks like a really good stitch. And now we're good. So now I'm going to go ahead and proceed to bring in the lower, because this is an upper and a lower case. So remember, when you first open the CT, it automatically prompts you to stitch it. And then it would just go into the basic mode right here, and you could start planning your case. Well, what if you have to do two arches? You can't bring them both in at the same time. So what I'm going to have to do is now go and import the lower STL. All right, so here's the lower STL. I'll bring that in, and I have to tell it it's a mandible. Notice it's over here in the same orientation because it left the intraoral scanner oriented to that maxilla uh, in the scanner's orientation, but that's different from Blue Skies. Where again, we're trying to stitch to the CT. So I'm going to tell it it's a mandible and click OK. All right, and once again, let's go ahead and verify the stitch. I do it in two windows, the axial slice. Let's go down, here we go. And that looks like a pretty darn good stitch. I can see both the tissue boundary is matching up wherever I have an airspace. And then also when I get to the level of the teeth, I've got that really tight adaptation. The other window I always verify in is this cross-sectional window. So with the maxilla and the mandible, I should be able to scroll through and see this really tight adaptation that you're seeing here. Green going around the, the CT of the teeth, blue going around the CT of the teeth on the lower. This looks great. And you should see that all the way around the arch. It's not good enough to be good on one side and then it's not tracking elsewhere. You need a really good stitch all the way across the arch. Again, if it wasn't, it's probably because of scatter or the other less likely scenario is that the patient moved during their CT scan and thus it's not really that accurate. You'll never get an accurate stitch on that no matter what you do, even if it's all virgin teeth. All right, but I'm not noticing any movement here. If you had movement, what you would see is like a double image where it's like a little faint ghost image out here, usually on the buckle. I'm not seeing any of that. So this looks great. So now we would be ready to go ahead and do the wax up. Remember, you could go ahead and just place implants here, but how do you know you're placing the implants in the right place prosthetically? And I always teach, you've got to do your prosthetic wax up. You know, if this was just, you know, say tooth number 20 and it's just a single premolar, I mean, yeah, you might not need to do a full wax up to know where that implant belongs. But the more teeth you're missing, 
And in this case, we're missing entire quadrants of T. You know, just guessing at it is not a good way to approach these cases. You really need to figure out where the teeth belong and then plan the implants backwards from that. And so as we do that, I'm going to go ahead and just throw in one tooth for right now. I'm going to come up here. We can choose whatever library of teeth we want. Let's, let's try Christian Brennis's oval teeth. You know, this is a female patient. Um, we'll just choose the upper canine for right now. And I'm going to hide the CT in the surfaces panel. And you're going to notice here, I, I can position this, right? And I can probably get it relatively close. But hopefully you're noticing we, we have a challenge here. And that is the fact that the lower is stitched the CT. It's not in occlusion to the upper. So I don't really know if I'm stitching this, or I'm sorry, placing my tooth properly to match up with the opposing occlusion, all right? Again, these, these two STLs were oriented originally to one another. That's how they left the intraoral scanner. Now they've been stitched to the CT. Most times with a dentate case, you, you comb beam scan them with their occlusion open. And thus, if you stitch your upper to the CT and your lower to the CT, you've lost reference for your occlusion, all right? And so in a dual arch case like this, that, that now has created a problem. So I'm going to delete this tooth right now because I'm really just kind of guessing at it. What I would like to be able to do is to bring in a, let's just focus on the upper right now. I would like to bring in the lower STL, but in occlusion to the upper. All right. So I'm going to go up here and bring that lower STL in again file import STL and let's bring in the lower STL every time you do that blue sky plan is going to prompt you to stitch it to the CT and that's awesome for when you're making your guides and stuff but that's really not what I'm after right now I don't want to stitch it to the CT I've already done that actually so instead of clicking you know mandible and okay I'm just going to X out of this and now what you see here is that we've got the lower STL and it's floating out here in space. All right. I can do the same thing. Let's grab, let's go ahead and grab the upper uh, STL. Once again, I've, I'm already stitched the CT. I don't need to do that. And here is what I like. Here's how they left the intraoral scanner. They're oriented to one another but they're completely out of orientation to these models. All right. So that's what we're trying to fix here. So if you ever, <clears throat> so if you ever had this scenario and you need to bring in an imposing model so that you can really dial in occlusion and stuff, you're going to have to take a different approach. Let's, let's do the upper first. All right. I'm going to need, while I do this wax up, I'm going to need to have one STL that is oriented to the lower, all right, in occlusion. So I want this red maxillary model oriented to this blue one, but in occlusion. So how can I do that? Remember, they left the intraoral scanner. They're properly oriented here. I need to basically reestablish their original orientation to one another, but over here, in this new position where Blue Sky has brought it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the upper STL, which is this red one, it's a maxilla. I don't want to stitch it to the CT. I want to stitch it to another model in the case, in this case, the blue model. So when I click that, it's going to say, okay, what destination model do you want to bring that red maxilla to? I want to bring it to the lower one, the blue model right here. And you don't want to do it by points, all right? That's a different animal. Let's suppose you had done a, a wax up, like a physical wax up on stone models, and you did a scan of the arch as it is, and then you also did a scan of the arch with the waxed up teeth. Well, if you scanned that wax up, you could just import it and then manually stitch it by points to your lower model that doesn't have any wax up on it, right? That's when I might use that. But here, I don't want to do that. 
all I need to do is say reestablish the orientation here of the red one to the blue, like it is over here with the blue to, or the red to the yellow. So all I do is click OK. All right. Do you see now how that is in full occlusion with this lower model? All right. That's what I'm after. And you can see here the same model up here in the green. They're the same model. It's just that this one I've brought in in occlusion. I haven't stitched it to the CT. So now let's do the same thing for the lower. The yellow model, it's a mandible. I want to stitch to another model. And what's my destination I would like to bring it to? I want to bring it in occlusion back to the green. All right, so this can get a little bit complicated, as you're seeing, when you've got a dual arch case and you're trying to do the wax ups. Again, without them being in occlusion, you're kind of guessing. So I'm going to bring it back into occlusion with the upper, which is the green model. I click OK. Now you see I've got duplicates of both files, but I've got one that's stitched to the CT, the other that's in occlusion to its opposing. All right. So the first thing I would recommend you do, you get to this point, and if you look in your surfaces panel, you've got two lower STLs, two upper STLs. I really need to rename these. All right, so if I just click on name for the green one, I'm going to say upper STL stitched to CT. And let's do the same thing for the blue. And then the yellow one, we could call that lower STL in occlusion. And then the red one is upper STL in occlusion. Okay, because this might end up getting kind of busy and you don't know what file is what. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing the upper wax up. All right. Let's just hide these nerves for right now because I don't really need to see that. I'm going to start by doing my upper wax up. So here's my one that was stitched to the CT. All right, you see it right there. And then I need my lower in occlusion. All right. Now I could go ahead and start planting some teeth. All right, so let's go up here. And we're going to be doing let's say a molar here and a canine back to a first molar over here. Usually I find it easiest to do a side at a time. So let's start easy. Let's go with just the molar on the upper left. And I'm going to try to, again, this is a female patient, probably oval shaped teeth. I'm going to go with the Christian Brennis oval library and we'll click OK. So wherever I click next, it drops that tooth. And then I'm going to do all of my tooth placement just in this 3D window. I don't really need to see the maxilla on my initial alignment. So when I hover on the tooth, I get the widget. I can bring that over here. And right now I'm just doing this based on the maxillary model. So, you know, I'm looking at the maxillary cusp tips. Those should kind of all flow along the same line. As I look from the distal, I'm trying to match the cusp inclination. All right, you see the slope. Here's a cusp tip and the slope of it. I ought to more or less have my central grooves aligned. All right, so central groove through central groove. Everything's lining up there. Cusp tips seem to be falling on the same general line and then the inclinations as I look from the distal look pretty good as well. Now you got to look at this from all different angles. It looked really good from an occlusal aspect and from the distal but as I look here it needs to be rotated up a little bit like that. All right which opened the contact so now I'm grabbing this pulling it back into a proper occlusion and then I need to get it correct height wise too. So again, cusp tips are more or less going to match up. So that's pretty close. It's 
maybe not perfect, but it's pretty good. All right, so let's say that that was the, the initial plan I've got for my wax up. And I think even still, I could come up a little bit more. Give it a good once over from all these different angles. All right, that's looking pretty good. If I needed to scale the tooth down, maybe make it not so wide, I can do that here. That looks good. All right, and I can look in occlusion here. So, Let's go ahead right now and do the mandibular first molar that we're going to need to do on this side. So I'm going to say add a tooth. I'm going to use the same library of teeth, Brennus Oval. I'm going to get the mandibular first molar. So I'll click here. And now I'm going to have to position this. Let's first of all bring it down. And just think about occlusion, right? You want the maxillary uh, mesial buccal cusp occluding in the uh, buccal groove of this mandibular tooth. You could just hide this for the moment. And if I was wanting to hide just this tooth temporarily, I could go into my tooth list and just hide that for the moment. And let's just get an initial ballpark alignment. So same type thing. That tooth is going to be oriented there. Looking from the buckle, it obviously needs to come up a little bit here. And by the way, sometimes as you do this, you might, let's say you wanted to uh, stretch the tooth or something, and your widget is buried up under here. If I wanted to grab that red arrow, it's like, well, where is it? You can always go in your surfaces panel and just select the lower STL here and bring the transparency down just a hair so that now I can see this widget. I could grab this and move it around. All right. Okay, so let's turn back on this maxillary molar. All right. And I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to kind of go with this ballpark right now. All right, I know I've not dialed in the occlusion perfectly and everything because yet another problem has arisen, whether you realize it or not. Okay, let's say that now I've done the upper and the lower wax up here. I've done one tooth on each side, and we would be good to go now if we were just planning our maxillary implant position, right? I could now turn off that yellow. I'm just focusing on this one and I could plan this tooth out, all right? And let's, let's say we do that, we got a great guide, everything's cool. We plan the implant backwards from the prosthetic endpoint. But now you've done your lower wax up, correct? It's time to now do your lower implant planning. And if I turn back on the mandibular tooth, note the problem, all right? Again, your CT scan was taken in an open bite, which was correct, because you want to be able to stitch all this. Well, now this up, or the uh, lower wax up tooth is completely out of orientation, right? Because it's oriented to this. So what are you going to do? Are you going to do uh, an entire wax up on each arch twice? I mean, that's really redundant. You don't want to do that. And so you're left with this dilemma of how do I approach this efficiently? So, you know, one way you could just do one case at a time and, you know, just treat them independently. That's okay. But I think there's a better solution here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead, I'm going to just delete each of these teeth. And right now, I'm going to just save this case as is. All right. Save project as. And let's just save it on my downloads for the moment with models stitched. All right, so that's been saved. I'm gonna just close the case. It's there, I've done this part of it. I can always reopen this. But 
have a little forethought in how you're going to approach this case. Okay, if you know you're going to run into that problem, I think your better option to be most efficient is to just, first of all, open your STLs just individually and just do your wax up with no regard for the CT scans or anything. All right, so to do that, I'm going to just go into, uh, let's say, Crown and Bridge. All right. That way it's not asking me to import a CT. I can, for what I'm doing here, I can tell it any of these. All right. And I just want to bring in my lower and my upper STL. I held control and you notice I've got both of these selected. Click OK. All right. It's always going to ask it to align first because remember your uh, your models come out of the intraoral scanner. They're oriented to that scanner's uh, you know understanding of what's up and what's down, side to side, all of that. Blue Sky's got a different definition of what's up, what's down, side to side. Okay, so we've always got to align models to our our global positioning within Blue Sky. So it's going to prompt me, is this a, uh, a dentate, an edentulous, or a partial model? This is a dentate model. And what you want to do is you can align based on the mandible or the maxilla, either choice. But you do need to make sure that if I've got maxilla selected here, that I don't have the lower STL indicated here by this blue outline. I want to click on maxilla and upper STL. So let's continue to the alignment. All right, and right off the bat, it's going to indicate for me an initial alignment. It just does that automatically by analyzing the teeth. But then I've got the opportunity now to, to refine this. And so you, you get this grid thing, right? What I want to do is looking from the top, I want this plane going right through the midline. So I'm going to scoot this over with the widget. And you don't notice it, but you know it's bringing the upper and lower into alignment because you imported them together. All right, but it's a lot easier if you're just looking at one model or the other. Okay, so I'm going to try to line this up. Do you see now that's passing right through the midline almost? Turn the widget on and off. And then I'm also thinking occlusal plane. So if I was to look from the side, think of this as your occlusal plane. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let's just say that we want to go with that. So we'd say finish. And now you watch those models, they jumped into the orientation. And that should match up with the skull now down here. So blue sky's definition of down, if I click that, I'm looking right into the lower STL model. If I was to click right here on that lateral arrow, that's right here on a side view. So now what I want to do is just do my wax up on these STL models independent of the CT and all that. I just want to get the wax up done. And you'll notice when we come back now to the original case where it is stitched the CT, just like I brought in a lower uh, in occlusion and then a lower stitch to the STL, I could do the same thing with my wax up. I could just pull in the uh, lower wax up and I could bring it oriented to the maxillary model in occlusion or I could bring it in oriented to the CT scan. Okay, so that's, that's really the idea of what we're doing. So at this point, let's now begin doing the wax up. All right. There's a lot of places I could do that. Right now I'm in Model Master. I could be in Advanced Mode. You can really add teeth in almost all the modules. Um, let's do the first one. Let's just go to Crown and Bridge Module. All right, Crown and Bridge Module has some advantages in that uh, you you know if you did this in Model Master, for example, you can just throw in teeth, but you're not going to be able to drag a cusp tip up and down. You're just globally positioning teeth. All right, whereas 
In Crown and Bridge, I can actually do all that really fine tuning of the occlusion. So I'm going to click on the upper tooth. Let's grab the Brennus Oval Library. You know, I can add the upper and the lower at the same time. We'll again do just this right side first. So wherever I click next, it drops them in and notice that they are in occlusion. So right off the bat, that, that's a nice thing because it does let me now pull both of these into the rough position while maintaining the occlusion in the library. So I'm looking at the occlusal plane and it ought to more or less match up here. Looks pretty good. It ought to be sitting on the ridge. All right, and I don't know that I'm exact, but I'm pretty close, right? So that's a really useful way to be able to position your teeth. All right, now at some point, if you want to not be globally positioning these, you want to now start refining them and, you know, doing each tooth independently, you're going to have to go to panels and let's go to teeth editing panel. All right, and that's where all these controls are. So right now, I've got this open to manipulate all the visible teeth, meaning manipulate them all together. If I turn that off, you see now I could choose to manipulate just an individual model. All right, I can manipulate just one tooth or the other. So now, whichever tooth I click on, I can manipulate that one individually. So what I'll do is I'm going to just hide the visibility of this lower. I'm going to right click the lower intraoral scan, hide its visibility, and now I'll start doing a little bit, you know, cleaner wax up job. All right, so this tooth looks too wide to me right off the bat. I'm going to make it skinnier. I'm going to rotate that around. I'm going to, oops, look from above here I can make it skinnier this way because I, I noticed that that contact was going way into this all right what about cusp inclination all right it looks pretty darn good from this direction and from the buckle but the moment I spin it around here remember I'm always trying to line up central grooves and cusp inclinations and I notice this tooth needs to be rotated way back this way all right See how now that's much more uh, lined up with the cusp inclination. You can see it actually easier from here. All right, buckle surfaces ought to be pretty close to one another. That looks good. How are the central grooves? They're lining up pretty good, coming right through here. So I like that. And at any point, in the surfaces panel, I can, you know, turn things back on and look at it individually. All right. I wanted this tooth to be a little bit longer mesial distal. I can grab it and do that. Okay. So that looks pretty good. And let's just say we want to go with that on the upper. There are some other fine tuning changes I want to do, but just kind of take this approach. I think it'll, it'll work better for you. Are the central groove heights at approximately the same level? I think they are, all right? As I look through here, it's not like I'm dropping off a cliff here, but I would say my cusp tips are too long. Would you agree, all right? They're pretty long. Uh, so suppose I wanted to do some now individual fine tuning of this tooth, all right? I could go into uh, the teeth editing panel again. If I click on that tooth, you know, you've got all of these uh, widgets that you can use. So if I wanted to work on this maxillary right first molar, I could use a smoothing tool, right? So when I'm using a smoothing tool, if you hold shift, you get a little dot and I could smooth that cusp tip because obviously her teeth are more worn than this library. Looking from the lateral, you see how I start smoothing that off. Control Z, Control Z. I'm going to just show you these tools real quick. All right, once again, global geometry, that would allow you to now stretch individual portions of the tooth. So I could bring 
the buckle cusps down. All right, that's a good option. Looking from here, the height of the lingual cusps also looks a little high. And then you've got other options. And, and really, there's no right or wrong on this. It's just playing with it and finding what tools you like. Um, I like to use this local geometry tool a lot. So when I hold shift, you see there's a, a spot size with an arrow. If I scroll up, or I could alternatively grab the tool size slider, you know, let's say that I feel like that's a little too much of a divot. Whichever direction that arrow is, I can pull that up and down, right? I could also, again, if those cusp tips to me looked a little big, I could maybe get my spot size to cover that entire cusp tip and bring it up and down, right? So you can do all of that. This is starting to look a lot better from a wax up perspective. All right. What if I wanted to bring some of the pointiness down on these cusp tips on the buckle? I can do that. So I'm kind of flattening out the occlusion a bit. That mandibular lingual cusp, or I'm sorry, the, the mesial lingual cusp. I brought it down a bit and I'm going to do the same on this one. So that to me looks a lot more appropriate for her adjacent teeth, right? And at some point, you know, I'll get this to where I want it. If I like it, I'm going to just lock it. Okay. Cause every time I hover on it, I don't want to accidentally knock it out of occlusion or, or screw something up. Now I need to do the mandibular tooth. If I turn that on, now I can do some global positioning of that. Mandibular tooth, let's now, uh, let's just say manipulate the model. So when I click on this tooth, that means it's going to let me alter, oops, I've got it on manipulate that. I don't want to do both of them. I just want to do this tooth. All right, where should your uh, mandibular tooth occlude? Well, you want the maxillary cusp right here going into the buccal groove of that. So I can maybe pull that over a bit. All right. At any point, I can hide the visibility of these other teeth. I want to, first of all, just get overall global positioning pretty good. So central groove should line up, right? Let's look. Central grooves look pretty lined up. All right, spinning it, that looks pretty good. When I look from the distal, looks like I need to rotate that up a bit just to match those adjacent cusp tip angulations. And then if you're following the way I do it, I want to get I'm not so concerned with the cusp height because I can easily drag that up and down. I'm more concerned with getting the central groove lined up. All right, so the depth of the occlusion, I try to match up pretty closely. So now we're starting to look like something. If I wanted to make it a bit skinnier buccal lingual, I can do that. But once I get pretty close, I'm gonna have to start looking at the opposing tooth, all right, which means having it visible and you can see here now I start thinking okay I need to bring that back a little bit I can't really see a lot about the occlusion so what if I just right clicked and turned this partially transparent okay now I can begin seeing where that tooth is occluding right and it's obviously prematurity right there I'll sometimes even change the color, like on this tooth right here, where it's selected. I could make that a different color, which makes it easier to see. And now it's really evident. Hey, you're, you're occluding into this uh, quite a bit. So let's now use some of those fine tuning tools. Teeth edit panel, the lower tooth, and let's just grab the local geometry tool. 
And so you start doing this little dance of trying to get these things where they are just matching up. All right, that certainly looks a lot better. You want your your uh, lingual cusps occluding into that central groove, don't you? So what if I brought up the occlusion here where it's not so deep? What if I brought up the occlusion right here to match up a little bit better? All right. And then as you start to do this, you know, just for a wax up sake, I'm not terribly concerned with getting perfect contacts and occlusion, but if you want to, you can either do that just by going through the building a crown workflow or like here I'm using a smooth tool and I'm just touching these little prematurity areas. I could also do local geometry. I could just bring that one spot down. I could bring this spot down. So you just got to play with it and see how it is most efficient for you to work with these tools. All right, I barely brought those two out of occlusion now. Just barely. And that's a pretty dialed in wax up, right? I like that. And if I wanted to see it with the opposing model, imagine that that now is your wax up. Now, if you're really trying to geek out on this, you know, it's not adapted. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not adapted at the contacts. It's not adapted to the tissue. And let's say I really was trying to get this perfect and define exactly where the emergence profile should be for this tooth. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I could do that as well. It's really... How, how accurate do you need this to be? For, for just do, doing upper and lower implant here, I, I think we're more than good. Or I wouldn't even have to do the occlusion as, as ideally as I've done. But let's suppose you do want to really dial that in. Well, you could just go through this crown workflow and then adapt it to contacts, to the opposing occlusion, to all of that stuff, develop the emergence profile just as if you were designing a crown. So under your panels, let's go to restoration design. That's this panel. Once you open these, they're going to be tabbed over here. What if we just said we're going to make a conventional crown on the maxilla? All right, so which model is the maxilla? It, I got to define all this. It's the upper model. The crown that I'm trying to make is this right maxillary first molar. What's the antagonist? It's the blue. And then I could say start. All right, now I don't need to see this right now. I don't even need to see the green model. So you can turn those on and off at any point, right clicking or in the surfaces panel. You could do automatic margin line detection, but let's say here, I want to really precisely define my own margin. I could just say manual mode and now begin clicking where I want the margin of this tooth to be. All right, so if I was trying to get it exactly like the adjacents, imagine, you know, you're, you're going to be emerging pretty close to here to where this is. So shift, and it's just drawing a margin. All right, from the buckle, you know, you wouldn't want a margin point way up here and having this super long tooth. So if I control Z that, this is actually pretty close to where it ought to be. I'm looking at gingival height here. Let's say you wanted it right at the same height. And then you got to close that loop. So it the software thinks it's building a crown, right? And so think of that. That's what you would do if you were defining a margin. And if I had a margin here at all, it would have auto detected that. Here I'm doing it as a wax up technically, so it's just going to merge the crown down to the margin that I've created here. 
If I needed to refine this a bit, I could just hold shift and redraw, right? And you see how that refined my margin here? That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just click next now. Actually, I do want to pull this out just a bit more. Let's just click next. We just defined a margin quote. Now it's going to ask you to jump through the steps just as if this was a crown. You've got to indicate a path of draw for your crown. I don't care about that here, so I just click next. All right, define the proximal area. Now you do want to do this because you would like to bring the proximal contact to the correct position. So I just held shift and colored in my proximal contact. I've only got one, so I didn't have to do a distal contact here. And it generates what it thinks is the bottom of a crown. Think of this as the intaglio of your crown. Okay, you're going to have cement spacers and all that. And you could define all these things. We don't really care for it, uh, for whatever it does there with a wax up, you know, your cement spacer and all that. So I can just click next, next, next through this. All right. And now it gives us another opportunity to refine our tooth placement. And we could do that if we want, but I've already done that previously, so I click Next again. And what it's doing now is it's going to morph the shape of this crown down to that margin I've indicated. It's going to build in the cement spacer and whatnot. So do you see the difference there? Remember that tooth, how it was protruding down through this model? It's just, it thinks this is a crown margin I defined, and so it just merged it down to that. And then you've got one last step where it says, uh, you know, cut intersections. Do you want to cut away this approximal intersection where it's impinging at the contact? Yeah, I do. So I'll leave that checked. And when I click next, it will have finalized the, again, what it thinks is the crown. See, there's your proximal contact. It's just a dead zero with the STL model. And now we're back to the original, right? And if you were to look in your surfaces panel, you've got your original maxillary crown. All right, that was this one. Let me make it a different color just so you can see it. There's my original crown. I never altered the occlusion any, but you can see the yellow is the original crown. It was all impinging in there. But now you've got this new surface called maxillary custom crown. And everything has been morphed into position. Turn that on and off. So if you wanted to really get this nailed down and, and perfect, you can do all that. All right. So just to demo one more time, I'm going to now hide this. Let's do the lower. And remember, that was this crown. Let's jump through it one more time. And then I'm going to time lapse, uh, you know, doing the opposing side. I'll mostly time lapse it. All right, I want to turn this pink crown into a conventional crown. It's on the mandible. That's good. That's good. Antagonist is the blue. Let's start it. I'm planning a new restoration. Once again, I've got to define a margin. So I go to manual. And I'm going to start out just by pretty much going about where this uh, impinges into the model close my loop and now I can refine this lingual contour all right now after tooth loss you're always going to have the ridge be a little bit more sloped down there so that potentially is unavoidable but I'm going to just continue on. And you see how when I did that change, I thought, ooh, I, I don't really think that's great. Apologize for the dog. That is my wife's little yappy dog. Hey, shut up. And she went back to work this year, and I have to put up with this dog now. So, sorry. All right. How deep do we want to go on the buckle? Well, maybe you wanted to swoop down a bit lower. 
you know, you can play with this all you want. You're just basically defining how, how do you want this to emerge out of the gingiva. All right, I'm going to go with that. Let's click next. Next. Again, I don't care about any of this except for this proximal area because I'm not really designing a crown. I'm just adapting that, that stock tooth shape to my STL model. Next. I've already positioned it for the most part. Next. All right. Do you want to cut in the occlusion? You can cut in the occlusion and the proximal where it's right here. So I'll say, yeah, sure I do. Okay, so you can see that you can fly through that. All right, and now we've got, again, a new surface. Here was the, uh, let's see, here's the original. Make it a different color so you can see it, the purple. But now we've adapted it to this exact model and everything is looking pretty good, all right? And so I've got now maxillary crown and mandibular crown adapted to my wax up. And that's gonna be kind of the most defined way to do this, all right? So now I would need to do the other side. Now this is a bunch more teeth. I think you'd agree. So um, I don't actually need the original crowns here. So at this point, I'm going to just delete those two. All right, because this, again, it starts getting busy up here, having all these things. We'll lock those crowns. Now, how would I do multiple teeth? <clears throat> a lot of ways you can do it. I'm actually going to just to show you other options, I'm going to go to the, the denture module. All right. Now, the reason for doing that is when you need to add a bunch of teeth at once, especially upper and lower, probably the most efficient way to do that is in the denture module. Because remember, it's designed for placing entire arches of teeth at once in occlusion, lining them up. So what all teeth am I replacing? I'm going premolar and molar on the lower. And I need canine premolar, premolar, molar on the upper. I'll click OK and wherever I click next is where it's going to drop those in. And once again I get this global positioning widget. I'm going to just try to get this in the ballpark and I find it easier to do like this and now do my alignment based on that. Obviously, occlusal plane is a little bit wacky. Remember how you earlier opened up your models and aligned everything? You can always turn that grid back on because remember, you lined up the occlusal plane to that. So that makes it pretty easy to now line up my occlusal surfaces. Okay. I could alternatively look at it on the mandible. And I'm seeing here, I'm going to definitely end up doing some tweaking of that. All right. So regardless, I'm going to have to end up doing some fine tuning here. Because now that I've done that, you see how that canine is, is impinging quite a bit. But at this point, now that let me get all of these teeth in there really, really quickly. And I could turn off this move entire tooth chain and I could play with these individual teeth. All right, so that canine to me looks a good bit bigger than her existing canine. I could click on any tooth individually. So if I wanted to make that skinnier, I can do so. She's got a little bit more squared off teeth. So I'm gonna just start playing with these. And from here, it's the same tooth positioning process that I showed you on the, the uh, other side, All right? If these teeth are too bulky, which they are for this scenario, I can make them skinnier. I could click this tooth. 
And you know, sometimes your, your widget's gonna be hidden under something. If you need to be able to see it a bit easier, you can make that tooth transparent. Alright, any one of these teeth I can do that to. So I'm just going to be now playing with this, trying to get these teeth where they belong in space. Alright, but the fact that they were brought in already in occlusion means that they're going to be pretty close. They're going to be in the ballpark. You know, that tooth individually, I can make it bigger because it certainly looks like it could stand to be bigger. So I'll time lapse this. I'm going to go ahead and just finish out this wax up for this side and then we'll come back to our original case and how I would now pull in all of these, you know, really well defined wax ups and get them independently oriented to our STLs in our guided surgery case. Because remember, we abandoned doing all the CT and stuff right now. We're just doing a wax up. All right, so time lapse from here um, and then we'll come back to this. Okay, I'm going to stop the time lapse here just because I wanted to show you that, you know, now I've kind of got the teeth globally positioned where I wanted them, but here's something you can't do in the denture module. Note, notice in the denture panel, it, you know, it's really optimized for pulling in entire arches of teeth all at once. Not so much pulling an individual cusp tooth here and there. Remember, that's going to be done back in the crown and bridge module. So I could always just now jump back to crown and bridge and you see, I like the overall positioning of this lower uh, uh, tooth, but it's, it's definitely impinging into the maxillary tooth there. And so back under your tooth editing panel, if I click that, I could now use the local geometry tool. And, you know, she's got a much flatter anatomy than what these wax up teeth, just the stock library shapes do. So maybe I wanted to bring that down a little bit all right and you see as i do that i'm starting to get a much more flattened off shape similar to how she has on her opposite side while i got that tool active i'm going to just go ahead and do this tooth as well all right and i could also I don't have to do it all on just the, the mandibular teeth. You know, maybe I want to take a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top. So I could always just do the same thing on the maxillary teeth. So let's say I took half the, the occlusal interference away on, oops, on the mandibular teeth. Now I could do it on the uh, maxillary teeth. I'm going to make the lowers transparent. Don't need to see this model right now. Because we never really played with the cusp tips or anything like that in the maxilla. This tooth doesn't have any occlusion currently, so what if I just brought that up? Do you see I just generated a couple of little contacts there? And do I want a bit more there, maybe? What about this tooth? All right, and now we've 
pretty quickly gotten to the point where everything is almost in occlusion. I've just got these little pinpoint contacts. I could deal with that right now if I, again, wanted to adapt them to the occlusion and maybe make the gingival margin correct. You know, you could adapt your occlusion at that stage, but when you do that, it's just going to basically subtract the opposing. And so you might end up with just this, uh, you know, kind of aggressive divot where it just cut it away with a, a Boolean subtraction. So I usually prefer to do it here. You've also got add and remove. So if I hold control or uh, shift, that's add. All right. If I hold down control, it's remove. So I can just click, click, and that basically adapts the occlusion there. So I'll do the same thing on this. I'm just taking down these teeth a little bit. And I like to do that as opposed to just smoothing it all because as you smooth, you, you end up you know, basically losing half your uh, occlusal anatomy. I want a bigger tool size here to take away. I can do that. I can also go local geometry. All right. And I'm, again, just kind of doing this little dance between my tools and which model I want to alter. I can always go back. Take a little bit more away from this one. And now we're getting somewhere. All right, that looks pretty good. These teeth now have a nice occlusion with them. I don't like where I did this one. I'll smooth that out a little bit. I don't need such a sharp cusp tip on that. Hey, hush it. Let me pause to put this dog elsewhere for the moment. All right, I'm back. So hopefully the dog will behave now. So we've got our wax up here, all right? Now, going back to that same idea of how I adapted that to, um, to my models, you know, and developed an emergence profile and everything like that, I don't have that right now. And so if I wanted to, I could, at this point, go ahead and do the same thing for uh, each of these. So I'm going to do that, but I'll time lapse it again because you've already seen it. It's just doing it on more teeth at this point. All right, so we've got all of the wax ups done. Everything is adapted. Um, you know, I could turn just everything on here and let you kind of see it. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of all of these ones that are not the custom crowns. All right, so now you can see my completed wax ups. All right, so as you're trying to select stuff, you know, sometimes it, annoying to have to individually just click everything on. If I just hid all the maxillary stuff, I could just untoggle visible on everything that's maxillary. All right, there we go. So 
at this point, we are, again, we need to bring that back into our original uh, case. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start exporting this stuff. All right, so let's do this. Let's, um, I'm gonna hide this green model. Here's all of my mandibular wax up teeth. I'm gonna just export that. All right, and now I'm going to turn on all of my maxillary wax up stuff. So there's all the maxillary wax up. We'll export those. All right, now again, I, I want you to get in the habit of understanding this this concept of you know the orientation of these things to one another right now if you'll remember we we brought in these intraoral scans they were in a different position in space because when you save an STL it's saving its position in space as well as the shapes of those objects so we brought in the intraoral scans we changed their orientation now to define, you know, what blue sky sees is up and down, side to side and all that. All right. So if I was to now go into this case, um, let's go and open our original upper STL and I'm opening it in mesh mixer just so you can see it here. All right. And then if I was to bring in the maxillary wax ups that we just saved, let's pull that in. All right, now what's up with this? Well, remember, I mean, Blue Sky's got a different definition of what's up, what's down. This is the original STL, just like it came from the intraoral scanner. So when we pulled it in to do this wax up, we, we changed all that, all right? So this is now out of orientation with the, um, the rest of my stuff. So what I would also wanna do here is just export this maxillary intraoral scan but I'll just name this oriented to wax up or something to that effect all right so I'm going to export this uh, upper iOS oriented to wax up and I'm going to do the same on the lower export data mandibular iOS oriented to wax up. All right, and then you ought to save this case in case you need to open it up again. This was saved in my documents. I'm going to just call this uh, wax up case. And with that done, I can close that down. So now let's let's do this. There's my original intraoral scan. Let's import the maxillary intraoral scan oriented to the wax up. All right, that is more like it. Because remember, the STL is saving both its shape, the, the shape of this intraoral scan, but also its position in space. So when it was modified in Blue Sky Plan, you know, now it's it's back to the orientation with this wax up all right so let's do this let's now go into that original case we opened we called it distal extension guide i'm going to relaunch that case all right so we're finally back into this case and what i've done is i just reopened this um just as it was without having all of my STLs and everything, because if you'll remember back to the start of this video, the dilemma I was trying to demonstrate was we, we bring it in, then we pull the upper in, it stitches to the CT, and then you pull the lower in, it stitches to the CT. And then you start you know, trying to set teeth, you don't have a, an opposing in occlusion. So you have to have duplicate files. It's a huge pain in the butt, and it's not how we want to approach this. So. Imagine you just 
you did your wax up first. Now that you know the dilemma there, the more efficient way is to just do your wax ups first, independent of the CTs and everything. All right, so now I've just opened the patient's CT again. Now we can start over with our uh, importing of STLs and you'll see how much easier this is. So this time, remember, I wanna bring in the, uh, this upper STL, but the one that's oriented to the wax ups, all right? And it's just the STL. It's gonna say, is this a mandible or a maxilla? It's a maxilla, I'll click okay. Alright, and there it is. And I don't know if you can still hear that stupid little dog yapping. It's in a closet, in its kennel, with three doors shut, and it's driving me nuts. So I apologize if you hear that on the video. Alright, so now that's obviously stitched well. We're just going to say we verified the stitch and everything because I can tell it, it's good. Alright, but, but now we would want the wax up. So we could go File, Import, STL. And let's bring in the maxillary wax up. Remember, they're going to be sitting out here in space because they were oriented differently in that blue sky plan file as they are in this blue sky plan file. We're not stitching it to the CT. You don't even have anything to stitch to. Instead, we want to stitch that maxillary wax up to this green model. And now we have it. All right, easy enough on the maxilla. Let's now look at the lower import STL. Once again, the lower intraoral scan oriented to the wax up. All right, just so you can see that, oriented to wax up. Click OK, it's a mandible. All right, and you can see here, good stitch, everything's looking great. And it's out of occlusion with the maxillary. And again, the dilemma, if you had just done this the other way, you're gonna have to now have duplicate files of everything, and it's a huge pain in the butt. But the reason for approaching it this way is now if I wanted to bring in the mandibular wax up, ah, that was the wrong file, let me cancel that. lower wax up. All right, there it is. It's out here in space, but remember we can reestablish its original orientation to this yellow model. So destination is the yellow one, not with points. All right, so would you agree with me? If I open here, we when we opened that previous separate blue sky plan file, we generated an upper and a lower wax up oriented to the Interval scans in occlusion. All right, so we pulled in the maxillary STL. It stitched the CT. Then we brought in the maxillary wax up and reestablished its orientation to the upper model. But then separately, we brought in the lower intraoral scan, stitched it to the CT, not to the upper, and we can pull in the mandibular wax up, but reestablish its orientation to the maxillary or to the mandibular intraoral scan. Uh, so this is so much better now as we start trying to plan implants because now I can see where those teeth are when I'm doing my, my wax up. No, I'm sorry, my implant planning. All right, so this is getting to be a long video because I'm trying to demo all the problems so that you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to end this video here but if you can grasp this, then you know everything you need to know about importing models and stitching them and, and all of that stuff. Because especially dual arch cases, it gets even worse when you start talking full arch cases. If you don't know how to do this, you end up with all of these duplicate files and it ends up so confusing. This is the way you want to do it. If you know you're working on both arches and your scans are not in occlusion, your CT scan, you're better off to go ahead and do your wax ups first with models in maximum intercuspation independent of the CT and then open your CT scan and bring everything in that way. Because now if I want to do 
my implant planning for right here. I say add an implant and I choose a, you know, let's just go Biomax 3.5 and I drop that in right here and I can just do it looking now at a wax up that's already in occlusion. All right. I'm not flipping on a dozen different duplicate files trying to figure out where things belong in space. I'm not doing my wax up twice. I do the wax up once and I don't really care that when I'm looking here that they're out of occlusion. I've still got the files in occlusion, remember? Those are those are right here. That part's already been done. I'm not concerned about that. So I'm gonna end this video here and uh, you know we'll pick up with the very next video I'm gonna post here on YouTube. If you're looking through my channel, you can just see everything posted sequentially. The next video is going to be now. Let's design, let's plan the implants for these cases. We're going to design some guides, but the problem with those guides is that they're going to be distal extensions. And that's never ideal because a guide just sitting on soft tissue way back here, you can imagine. If I've got an implant planned under this first molar, as I'm drilling that osteotomy, it's just wanting to squish and I'm losing the accuracy. So that'll be a much quicker and easier video, but uh, we'll break these things up. All right. Thanks for staying with me. See ya.